Hi everyone, it's Dawn Fisher of Morning Glory Needleworks. Welcome to my, can you believe it, 24th Floss Tube video. I've been doing this for almost a year now. So January 1st, um, 2023, it'll be one year. So I'm, I'm very excited. Thank you to everyone who subscribed, commented, liked my channel, even just visited it. I really appreciate everybody um, checking in on me. And as always, here's my little intro blurb. Everything, well, not everything, but most everything I talk about, I provided links in the description or comment section of the video. It's uh, below the video on YouTube. I also break my video into chapters. So I think this one has like five or six chapters. So if you just want to see one section or if you just want to go back and watch one section over, just click on the timestamp next to the chapter you want to see, which could be uh, 12 minutes and 16 seconds, and it'll take you right to that section of the video. Also, at the end, I have links, uh, like I said, to my Etsy shop, to Instagram. Please follow me on Instagram, the Stitch of the Month group on Facebook, uh, Morning Glory Needleworks Facebook page, buy me a coffee, bio.link, which actually has links to all this other stuff, plus um, any other um, videos uh, or any other uh, links that I think you should see. So, and as a reminder, of course, I don't get paid for any of this. Um, if I recommend something, I don't get anything for it. I just love it and want to share it with all of you. So it's the 15th of December. Oh my goodness, I have so much to talk about. So much has happened in the last um, couple of weeks, but I'm only going to talk about the good stuff because we have had a lot going on. But anyway, so first, I'm going to start off with the Jingle Ball. I talked about that in a couple of other videos and our floss tubes, and it finally took place. It was January, December 2nd and 3rd, and it was online, but it was supposed to be uh, December 2nd and 3rd, but it actually kind of flowed over into the 4th, and I'll explain that later. So um, it was a lot of fun. I, I really enjoyed it. Um, it. They had a few issues. Of course, this is the first time they've done it, and the company um, that they used to set this up um, promised them they could handle all the people and everything. Well, yeah, no. So there was a few problems. Um, people couldn't get into the rooms or maybe only one person could get in. They had all these different stitch rooms where you could um, meet up with other people and stitch. And um, it was um, it was kind of a mess, but the at first, but um, all the classes were over Zoom. So before I could get into any of the other um, stitch rooms or, uh, oh, excuse me, or any of the other meeting, meet and greets, um, I did get into Zoom where they were holding the classes. So I'm going to talk about um, the classes I took. Everything's so exciting. and But I know uh, Stephanie Webb of Lindy Stitches and the other designers during this time when it wasn't working were um, frantically trying to get everything working, uh, working with the company that was supposed to be hosting them, who finally just left them on their own. And um, so I think it was it was supposed to start Friday night at like five or six Eastern. And I think it was uh, 2 a.m. when or just before 2 a.m. when Stephanie and then uh, Janice Note of Noteworthy stitches um when they finally got the um rooms up and running and they basically switched them all to zoom meetings so they could do it but it's it's pretty bad when you're the people that have hired you figure out how to fix stuff so obviously they won't be using that company again if they have another one so um Anyway, I felt really bad for them, and it, but uh, and a lot once all the other participants and me realized what was going on, I thought it was me, and everybody thought it was, you know, their own fault. They couldn't get into these rooms. I kept going in and trying to 
the help screen that was provided from this platform they were using was not very helpful. We'll just um, put it that way. It just confused me more. And I'm, I'm pretty computer savvy, but it was a mess. So anyway, um, but once I found out it wasn't me and they were trying to fix it, it was okay. I mean, it wasn't okay, but it was, I, I could settle down and not wonder what was wrong with my computer or whatever. Anyway, so we got in. Um, I know, I don't know how many people were actually signed up. She may, um, she may list that later, but right now I know at least 685 people were signed up because one of the Zoom meet and greets I was in, there were 685 people in the room. I've never seen that many people in a Zoom. But so it was very exciting. So they had a lot of participants and it was a lot of fun. I'm going to go into some more stuff about what happened. Um, so so there were 12 designers involved with this. They were Janine McGowan of Blue Flower Stitching, Linda Stoltz of Erica Michaels, Ashley and Amanda of Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery, um, Kathy Haberman of Hands On Designs, Beth Twist of Heartstring Samplery, Stephanie Webb of Lindy Stitches, who um, started the whole thing, uh, Tracy Horner of Ink Circles, Janice Note of Noteworthy Stitches, Jody Rice of Satsuma Street, Beth Seal of Summer House Stitchworks, Cheryl McKinnon of The Tiny Modernist, and Teresa Kogut. So I'm sure you've heard of uh, most of these people. I hadn't heard of all of them. I know a lot of designers, but I hadn't heard of all of them, but I was very happy to meet them and learn more about them. So there were meet and greets with all of the designers over Zoom, which was, it was wonderful. Um, the designers talked about how they started designing, a lot of other, other things, their lives, how they got the names for their, uh, business. Um, unfortunately, I didn't get to all of the meet and greets, but I really enjoyed the ones um, that I went to or saw. And it was nice because they were in person. It was live and it was Zoom and you could actually ask them questions and they could answer you um, in person. And there was also a lot of stitching rooms, which were um, Zoom groups for people with different interests. And there was there was a group for cat lovers, a group for dog lovers, a group for different areas of the country. We were southeastern uh, the United States. That's where um, Florida is. And then there was southwestern United States, which was like Texas and other states around there, northeastern, all that. And then um, there was a group for introverts, which was like you just all sit and stitch and nobody talks. I didn't go into that one. But And there was a group called WIP Parade, W-I-P, Works in Progress Parade, so people could show what they were working on. I was in that one for quite a while. There was a lot of different groups. It was, a, it was fun. It was a lot of fun. And I was lucky enough to get into three of the classes um, they, were, they were offering. I, um, I almost felt bad because some of the people didn't get into, into any of the classes. Um, I was very quick on the trigger to sign up as soon as the classes became available, obviously. And I, I believe um, if they have another one, they're talking about having mo more classes, they had to add more classes. They didn't realize how many people would want to take these classes. And most of them were really reasonable priced. I mean, I don't pay much for stuff. So I was very happy um, with these, um, the classes I took, which you'll see in a minute. I'll talk about those um, actually, I'm going to talk about them right now because that sounds like fun. So the first class um, I took was from Linda Stoltz. She is from Erica Michaels Designs. Um, I always thought there was an Erica Michaels, but there really isn't. She actually named the company after her son, who is Eric Michael Stoltz. So that's where the name Erica Michaels came in. She will answer to Erica. Um, but this class was on um, the stitched berries. You know what I mean? They're little, um, they're, they're like the um, strawberry emery's that you used to get, little bitty ones, only she makes big ones. She has a lot of designs for these berries. I haven't done any of them yet. I did 
purchase a berry pattern the other day, but it wasn't one of hers. But anyway, but I am, I've never made one. At least I don't think I have. Um, if I have, it probably wasn't a stitched one. So it was really nice because she just talked about how to make it. We didn't have to stitch anything. We didn't have to buy a pattern. I don't remember how much the class was, but it it wasn't much, maybe 10, 10 or $15. And it was like, it was supposed to be, I think, a one hour class, but she, it, she just kept talking and we had a good time and she talked, it was like an hour and a half. So um, we had a good time. And she demonstrated, she actually had a presentation and showed some live um, of how to put these together. Cause I've never, like I said, I've never made one. And even if people have made them, you always learn something more. So, and she was nice enough to send us um, templates for all the different sizes. This is 28 count. So if you're doing one of her berries on 28 count, this is the size. Um, this is for 32 count. And then this is for 36 count and 40 count. So she emailed those to us. So that was really nice of her to um, share these templates with us. So anyway, that was it. It was just a really fun class. Um, and the next class I took was from Teresa Kogut. And it was for making, it was called Stitched Covers for Antique Books. And it wasn't quite what I thought it was going to be. I thought we were going to make something to wrap around a book or cover a book. Um, but I really, I still enjoyed uh, the um, class and I learned a lot. What she does, she stitches a small design and then mounts it on um, like sticky board or something along that line. And then um, she showed different ways to um, like embellish it with other fabrics and stuff. And then she will mount it on the front of an antique or on the back of an antique book. And that way you can stand the book up and on its side or on its end and open it up a little bit and it will stand up. And then the design um, will be there instead of putting it in a frame. I don't know if I would do that on an antique book. I'm really, I have a lot of antique books and I don't know if I would do that unless it was something really, some kind of a strange, weird book that um, I would never, that isn't worth anything. Of course, some of the books, People think they're not worth anything, but they aren't. Anyway, so um, she did send us a pattern. We did not have to stitch it before the class, but it was wonderful. And then this is what she um, actually took and mounted on, um, on the paper in the book. And she showed us, isn't that cute? This is um, for that class. It's called Christmas Cuttings. And then the woman with the little pair of scissors. It's very cute. And this is, I don't do a lot of Christmas, but I would probably stitch something like this. And she sent us, there's um, color chart, um, black and white chart. And then we could, um, well, yeah, black and white chart also. So um, I really, I was going to take notes, but I really, really didn't need to. It, it kind of made sense in my head how to put all of this together. So it was a lot of fun. Again, it wasn't expensive. We got, this is an exclusive design that um, will not be sold, I don't believe. It says Jingle Ball 2022 exclusive. So we got that. So that was exciting. And then uh, she was very nice. Uh, again, we sat and talked to her for a long time. She answered all of our questions, showed us a lot of other items. So that was a lot of fun. And then she also sent us a bonus chart. So this is we just got this in the mail or in email, um, I don't know, a couple of days ago. And this pattern will be available um, at um, Na the Nashville market in March, 2023. But we all got, everybody in the class got a copy of it. So that was wonderful. And I think that class was Saturday morning. The um, Erica Michaels, Linda Stoltz class was Friday night. This class was Saturday morning. And then in the afternoon, I had another class with Linda Stoltz um, and it wasn't really a class. It was more of a, um, a lecture or a discussion, I guess, about a lot of her antique samplers and some of her antique needlework. And it was supposed to be just antique samplers, but she also uh, showed kind of what I do. She showed a lot of her other 
stitching goodies that she had and uh, collectible items um, and other items she had. So it was very interesting. Again, you know, it lasted longer than it should or than it was supposed to, but we all had a good time and enjoyed it. So again, I don't usually take classes because I don't, I don't want to do a big project or something because I have my own things I want to stitch. But I love taking little classes like this or lectures. I always learn something. So um, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm hoping they have another one next year. So, but anyway, and again, I told you there was 12 designers. So each of the de designers had a little store where they offered a few designs. They were mostly um, Christmassy. Uh, I didn't buy much because I don't, I don't buy a lot of Christmassy items. I don't stitch a lot of Christmassy stuff. But um, they also, each designer also offered um, a design that was exclusive to the Jingle Ball and will not be uh, available anywhere else. Now, I didn't, I didn't, um, like I said, I don't do a lot of Christmas. So I only purchased two items, but I love them and I'm very excited about them. So let me show you um, this one. I just, oops, there, I dropped it. I just, I fell in love with this one. I, you probably can't see it. Let me uh, take it out of the package here. It's called, you're not gonna be able to see that. It's called, Who Let the Frogs Out? Perfect, perfect for stitching. Can't see on the picture. It's done on a, a beautiful um, over dyed green linen and with, um, I think it's by Weeks Dye Works and, um, Grits, I think, is the, the name of the thread, which is a white thread. And so I wanted something simple to work on while I was at the retreat because I didn't have anything available. I don't know. I have stuff everywhere, but I wanted something new to work on over the weekend during the Jingle Ball. So I bought this. And unfortunately, I didn't have any really cool green. You can see the beautiful, I think the fabric might be called Kermit. I can't remember. But um, on that, but I did have some, it's um, Water Lily by, uh, it's either Wichelt or Swigart, I can't remember. I actually use it for one of my classes, but I got this and then I had some over dyed green. Isn't that cute? This is like maybe a quarter of it. The scissors, a th the frog with the needle, and the stitching, it's a lot of fun. I love it. So um, I worked on that um, during um, the meet and greets. And while I was in the stitching rooms, um, talking to people and, and other um, other stitchers, but it, it was a lot of fun and I like it. And it's something simple and I, I wanted, um, I like it because it's one color. And then if I'm, um, at chemo or something, not for me, for Jeffrey. I like to sit, cause we're there about three hours. I'll bring something simple like that to work on. So um, I don't, I don't have anything complicated. Okay, so I picked up what I dropped. So um, like I said, I, I don't buy a lot but I really like this pattern. It's very simple. It won't take long to do. And I'm really excited. It's called Ode to the Stork. It um, on, on here, it says, once a tool for the midwife forever remains in stitching life. And it comes with a little stork, um, oops, which is coming out of the bag, stork charm that gets attached. And I actually, for this one, I bought the whole kit because it was really reasonably priced. The kit and a little pair of stork scissors, not that I don't have, several pairs of stork scissors around but these are nice silver ones and they they tie you make like a little pillow there's this um plaid black and white it's all black and white plaid fabric it comes with um floss and then it's got some metallics here the um scissors and then white i think it's um do do zweigart 32 count Belfast white linen and um, 
it'll just be fun, fun, simple stitch again. And on the back, it talks about um, the stork scissors. So historical umbilical cord clamps were fashioned after storks because of their shape and association with delivering babies. Midwives more than likely carried embroidery to work on during long labors. This has carried on with storks being an iconic shape for embroidery scissors for years. I just loved it. And so that was the other kit I bought again, very reasonably priced. Um, I'm not sure if this is available. It probably is available um, to the public, but it was, um, it was really nice. I loved it. So, um, so uh, again, I wanna go back to the stitching rooms and I, I actually got to see a lot of friends, uh, other stitching friends, they would pop in and out of the rooms. I didn't always see them because if you've ever been on Zoom, I, I have a laptop, so I think I can, I don't know what it, how many fit to a screen, eight or I mean, 12 or 15 faces fit on a screen. So you have to like page over to be able to see everybody. So it was fun. I got to see people I know, I haven't seen for a while. I got to meet new people. Um, and then I mentioned that the Jenga ball kind of extended into the fourth. It was supposed to end at midnight on the third. Well, some of the people were still in, in some of the Zoom rooms, so they stayed open. They didn't close. So some of them were in there till two or three o'clock in the morning, and they just left the room open. And then they got up the next day, and other people got up, and they went to the website like I did, and went, oh, there's a room still open. And it, I can't remember what she called the room. She actually closed, had everybody move to one room and closed it. And she called it something like the ones that would not leave or something like that. And we sat and stitched all day long um, just with the Zoom open. I was going to be working in my office anyway here, my sewing room. And I thought, well, I'll just... Um, I'll just check it out because I was going to see if there's anything else maybe I wanted to buy. And then there was this room open. So I just sat here all day and I actually worked on um, the sampler I'm reproducing that I'm going to talk about later and um, just talked with this one group of people. It was a great time. It was just people from all the other rooms just came in together. A lot of cat lovers. We talked about cats. We talked about dogs, we talked about stitching, we talked about all sorts of stuff. So anyway, um, I'm hoping they're talking about having another jingle ball. So we're looking forward to that. I'm sure there's going to be a lot more people because a lot of people found out about it after it was over or not over necessarily, but as it was going on and they're like, how do we get in? It was, you know, too late. So, and they already had, I don't even know, like I said, I don't even know how many people signed up for it, but there was a lot of people. So um, it was obviously very popular and went over very well. So I'm hoping they're gonna have another one. And we actually, um, Steph, Stephanie from Lindy Stitches, who was running it, she came into the room where we were and she looked wiped out. It was a, a long weekend for her, a lot of stuff going on. And um, she was exhausted, but very happy that they finally got it going. And um, uh, some of the people in the room said, we don't want to wait till next winter. How about we have a spring fling or um, a spring prom? Because I don't know if you saw any of the things. If you go to the Jingle Ball thing or go to um, Lindy Stitches, Steph's um, Instagram page, you'll see her. She was, she was wearing like a Christmas fairy outfit. I don't know, but it was great. This formal gown, it was a lot of fun. So anyway, if you get a chance next year, be sure to sign up for this or any of the other ones. I like the online ones too. They aren't, you know, they aren't as good as being able to go away from home, but I'm not traveling as much anymore. So it was a lot of fun. And speaking of retreats, as I mentioned in my previous pl plus two, I went to another retreat last weekend. So I had the Jingle Ball the first weekend. 
the second and third, and then another retreat in Brandon, Florida, which is, it took me about 45 minutes to get there from my house. I didn't stay at the hotel. It was just easier to commute. And then I didn't have to pay for a hotel room. Um, and that was December 9th and 10th. It was a small group, again, being close to the holidays. Um, it was um, a lot of fun. I, I keep saying this, and you may get sick of it, but I love retreats just to get together with people and just stitch and not and let the cares of the world go away. For me, that's um, the best part is just to get away from everything. It was it was worse when I, or better, I should say, when I was working, it was so good to get away from work. And now that we're retired, we don't get out much either. So um, it was good um, to get away and just see all my stitchy friends. So as always, we got some really cool stuff. So I wanna go over and just show you, um, this retreat was put on by um, Sunshine State Sti Stitching, I think it is. Ann Williamson, you can find her on um, Facebook, search for the group, are on Florida Stitching Retreats is a Facebook group. She lists stuff on there. She has a retreat about every other month. She has quite a few planned out for the next year or so. So definitely check it out. Um, but at every one, we get a wonderful bag. Isn't that great? Christmassy um, holiday, holiday stitching bag to hold all our stuff. And we get wonderful goodies. There's a bag with a little, um, it's a little thing to clean if you have to pull out stitches. I talked about it, I think, in the last, either the last one or the one before. My last floss tube or the one before. It's like a little brush. And if you have to remove stitches, especially of a dark color, um, it will move the, it'll pull off the fuzzies. And then we always get these wonderful, um, I have one here out of the, these hold, um, just have everything everywhere. I'm so unorganized today. These little things, they expand to hold whatever pencils. I stick pencils and scissors. You can stick um, whatever you, big things, little things. It holds a lot. So anyway, these are great. So we always get one of those. Um, we got a wonderful, um, this is a needle minder. These are really cute. She puts buttons on the back. This is Audra's Stitching Box is um, the name of her. You can see that. Um, but I, I love the, the black and red plaid. Reminds me of um, living in Michigan. We got some uh, floss. There's some black anchor because she uh, Anne thinks that covers better than um, black DMC. So she wanted us to try it. And then there's a piece of uh, a DMC sample. Um, here we have, we always get a new pen with a stylus. I love it. Because I just loaded a program on my la or on my uh, tablet. You get a highlighter so you can take all this stuff. This is usually what I do. I open up my bag and put all my stitching accessories in my little thing I got. We get a little notebook in case you want to Take notes, it says Stitching with Friends, Sunshine State Stitching. Um, what else we got? Oh, a counting pin for um, counting items. It's got a snowflake on it, beautiful. Well, let me take it out because I want to. This is um, by Stitching Lee Along, Cherise Smith. Um, and it's a really pretty counting pin to help you count your um stitches as you go, which most of you know can be very challenging. You're trying to, oops, trying to count a long way. I'm dropping things. I got, uh, there's a 2022 charm and then a wonderful little um, stocking charm. And then we also got uh, this little magnet, Isn't that cute ornament. Put all this stuff back before I lose it. And we got a the second day, we got a nice um, plastic storage box. Those are nice to keep all your loose goodies together. Plus, it's over there. Plus, um, 
there's a, like a freebie table. People bring in patterns they stitched or things they don't want anymore, or um, they just, you know, sometimes you buy a pattern and you don't want it, or you've stitched it and you want to rehome it. So I, I usually don't get a lot of stuff, but this time there happened to be um, some really neat things. I thought this was a pretty pattern. It's called Lead a Quiet Life. Very pretty, sweet. And I got this. It's hard to see. It's um, somebody obviously made it already. It's a Virginia Guild of Needlework um, needle book. And it's actually got the thread and the, um, the linen and lining fabric with it. I haven't pulled it all out to see what it looks like yet, but that obviously it's very small and won't take long to put together. Um, I picked up this book. It's just a plain notebook. It's actually got like dotted fabric or not fabric. Um, it's not lined paper, but it's got almost like graph paper, but it's just dots. And um, so that was just a nice, and it's, it's hard, so it will handle, stand up to being travel around. And this is um, called Pilgrim Stitchers. And it looks like it fits in an Altoid tin. And I just thought that was a nice, um, cute, quick little, um, says the needles work shall be my art. And that's what the inside of the tin says. So again, those were free goodies. And I'm so excited. I won a door prize. I actually had to leave early on Saturday and I won the, the door prize like just as I was getting ready to leave. So I was very excited about that. And this is something I know a lot of people buy. I bought one last year and it's called the Book of Days for Needlework Enthusiasts. And this is by Needlework Press. They're, um, they're very popular and it's kind of like a, a calendar and then you can write what you're stitching notes on here people put stickers on there it's just a very um a very fun um book and just keep track of what what you've been working on so um anyway i i was excited because i bought one last year and and i was lucky enough to win one this year so and there's some few antique uh sampler plat patterns, some planning pages and that. So that was very exciting. Um, so it was a good retreat. Unfortunately, I had to leave early um, around, I left around one o'clock on Saturday. So I didn't get to stitch as long as I wanted to, but I still had a good time and got to see everybody. So I can't wait. I'm, I'm not signed up for another one, for another retreat until um, March. So that's, um, that's the next one I'm going to. So I won't be talking about that for a while. But as I said before, I don't take a lot of classes. But then again, <laughs> the Sarasota chapter of EGA is having Jean Farish come in for a class on how to put a scissor fob, how to make the scissor fob and put it together. I don't, the pattern doesn't have a picture of the finished scissor fob. But this is what the sides look like. I know it's hard to see. I can make that. This is what the, um, how, um, and then it'll be like a little pointed thing. So what we have to do is stitch this before the retreat or before the class. And that class is, I think, it, what did I say, January 23rd. And so hopefully I'll have it finished for the um, very, very first floss tube that I plan on doing. So we need to stitch these, have them all ready, and then she will help us put them together during the class, which I don't know, I think it's gonna be a couple of hours, but it comes with this fabulous linen. Um, it's uh, it's like my favorite color, it's aqua. Um, hopefully it looks as pretty um, on the screen, but it's beautiful. And then all these wonderful floss colors. I think they don't all go in there, but most of them do because I also bought, she also offered, this kit that she um that was part of the cruise she had the needlework cruise which I didn't get to go to but I just I like this because I'm a Florida girl now even though I'm originally from Michigan 
it says beach time, but she gives a whole bunch of different um, things you can stitch, sayings you can stitch, Florida, cruising, whatever. Um, and I may, I'm thinking about changing it because you can't see it, but there's a very good, but there's back stitch. Um, there's a back stitch verse here. And it said, smell the sea and feel the sky. Let your soul and spirit fly. Now that is by Van Morrison. And I looked it up and it's from Into the Mystic, which is, I thought it was because that's one of my favorite next to Moon Dance. That's my favorite. But Into the Mystic is one of my favorite Van Morrison songs. So I may try and fit Into the Mystic here and use that. But um, I just thought it was a lot of fun. I've seen, I've seen her posting on uh, Facebook about how she was working on that. And these are actually, this is actually Cosmo Floss, which I have not used before, but this is all Jean uses now. She just raves about it. So I'm looking forward to um, using it and um, seeing if I like it. So that's my upcoming class. So next, I have so, I, I'm so excited. Like I said, I have so much going on, so much to talk about this time. I'm trying to be short and sweet, but I'm excited and having a good time here. So um, I follow a couple uh, kind of witchy groups on Facebook, and I was excited to see that one of the designers um, was offering some ornaments that she designed, and she actually hand dyed the fabric to go with it. And um, I was so excited because I love the fabric, even though... It's 11 count Ada, which I never stitch on, but I just fell in love with it. It's it's beautiful. Um, I'm going to show you the fabric and I know it won't be as pretty, but can you see all the sparkles? It's opalescent and it's this wonderful hand dyed green um, fabric, kind of mottled green. So um, she only had a limited amount of um fabric available. So luckily I got in and ordered it immediately when it was available and she sold out now. So uh, the name of her name or her company name is Witches Garden Crafts. I did put a link in um, in the description comments section so you can go look at her other design. She has some other beautiful fabrics that I'm thinking about getting. Um, but what I bought was the Merry Cryptmas ornaments. So I have one done. I have two. Well, I have one done. One is like almost done. It'll be done if I just sat down and worked on it for an hour, half an hour. And two, I haven't started yet, but I wanted to show you um, the, um, the ones. I want to show you all these because the designs are great. So here is, this is the first one I did. It says dead inside, but festive because that's, that's me sometimes. Um, let me find that one, this one. But isn't that cute? It was just a lot of fun. I'm gonna, I cut the fabric and then um, like right after I cut it, she posted something. If you cut it this way, you can get a lot more out of it. So, but I'm gonna try and get, cause they're just ornaments. So I'm gonna try and get a bunch more out of this fabric because I just, I think it's great. I, I usually I usually don't stitch on this, but it's a lot of fun. And then the next one in the group, this is the one I have almost done, is Mary Kramp Krampus. Now, um, if you don't know, you need to look up Krampus. He's um, kind of like the opposite of St. Nicholas. So um, anyway, but he's kind of like a ghouly guy that goes around and beats on bad kids with sticks. So this is Mary Krampus. So there's my thread hanging off and he's almost done. Again, this is a lot of fun. These work up really fast, um, but I just I just love the fabric. And then um, I haven't started this one yet, but this is called Mary Cryptmas. Isn't that fun? I love all the lights around the um, crypt there. And then this one also is Mary and Bright. I love that. And this is a Welsh, I can't remember what it's called. It's some kind of a horse that comes to your house, big horse skull. Look it up, Mary, M-A-R-I. Anyway, 
but that that's what I'm working on right now. And they're a lot of fun. Um, she, uh, this is the label that came. I put a link to her um, um, Etsy site. And this is this was Cryptmas Opal. It was called. Is the um, fabric that I got, and then I went and bought. I actually just went and bought all the floss that I needed. I missed a couple, and then had to go back. But I had um, coupons for Michaels, so. I went and got all that, and luckily they had it all. I think last time I went back, they were missing like one color of floss, but I was surprised they had, because um, I've heard horror stories about people not being able to get um, the floss they wanted because there, there's a short supply of floss. Oh, I forgot one more free thing I found at the uh, retreat. I picked up this, somebody brought it in. Isn't this great? A little drawer up opens up. This is going to go right here on my uh, stitching desk so I can put stuff in the top and handy things because I have stuff spread everywhere and falling off the side. And maybe then I will know where stuff is at. So anyway, <laughs> right now this table is a disaster because I have all this stuff sitting here. So now the moment of excitement. And um, as I mentioned in my last floss tube, I've added a new antique sampler to my collection. I didn't really need another sampler, but this one was very reasonably priced and I fell in love with it. So I'm going to show it to you. Um, you have to hold a piece. It's not framed, which also saved in shipping. But um, isn't that wonderful? I'm going to put... Let me put a piece of paper behind it a little bit, see if you can see it better. Helps a little bit, maybe. But it's got Adam and Eve and these wonderful birds on the basket. You can see the serpent. Can you see that? Wrapped around handing Eve the fruit. The border is fabulous. It's got these birds, and I don't know what these flowers are. Maybe honeysuckles. I thought they were moths at first. And then there's a big verse at the bottom and her name. Um, so um, this was stitched by Mary Ansel on November 8th, 1822, when she was, I believe it's 12. It's kind of hard to see the um, that part, her age. I don't know if she picked it out, but the age is kind of hard to read. But it, it looks like a tube. And 12 is probably about the right age. Um, the linen is really um, loosely woven, as you can see. You can see almost right through it. It's about 36 threads to the inch. All the stitches are worked in silk. It's all cross-stitch, which is great. Obviously, it's in pretty rough shape, but the center is good. The center is all there. <clears throat> now, to me, it looks like there was a ribbon around the edge and it deteriorated, and I don't know if somebody tried to rip it off, or um, I just wonder if somebody tried to wash it. Uh, it's an antique sampler, and unless you know exactly what you're doing, do not wash samplers, but the way the edges are frayed, to me, it looks, um, it looks like it was washed and then ironed or something. Please don't wash antique samplers unless you know what you're doing. But I love the the border um, with the birds uh, and the big the big birds here, and you can see they're holding one of the fruit in their mouth. Uh, so there's uh, the like I said, Adam and Eve, and Adam is taking the fruit from the serpent. Now the verse, which you can't, you can hardly see. I can hardly see it, and it's right here. I had to get on top of it with uh, something dark behind it and my like plus five magnifying glasses to try and read the verse. And even when I read it, it it's kind of weird. So what it says is the serpent said, be ruled. Now she spelled ruled, R-U-I-L-D. Maybe that's the way they spelled it then. The serpent said, be ruled by me and pluck the fruit from off 
the tree. You will be as gods, then said the devil, and you will know both good and evil. She plucked the fruit. It tasted sweet and gave to Adam for to eat. The witch did all their glory blast. They out of paradise were cast. So um, it's kind of <laughs> funky. I did some research on the verse. Um, I, I didn't find an exact match, but I actually did find another similar sampler with a similar verse. And that one was uh, signed and dated Ann Kendall, work done 11 years, 1813. So this was done in um, 1822. So that's pretty close in age. And um, Ann's verse is a little bit different, but it has some of the same wording in it. What it says, um, Ann's verse says, Lord, give me wisdom to direct my ways Beg not the riches, nor the L-E, it's cut off because she ran out of room. And then it says, she plucked the fruit, it tasted sweet, and gave to Adam for to eat. The witch did all her glory blast, they out of paradise were cast. God said the woman shall be, God said the woman shall be still subject unto her husband's will, also, I will decree that thou shall work with sweat upon thy brow. Nevertheless, the woman's sea shall break the serpent's head. Indeed, be thou faithful unto death, and I will give the a crown of life. So obviously, um, I don't think they necessarily maybe read some of the words right. It's, it's really hard. But um, anyway, it's there's some similarities between those two um, verses, some of the same lines. And I'm gonna do some more research and see what else, I, if I can find anything else um, to match that. Um, so the sampler by Anne, it also has an Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve are very similar. The tree is different. Um, this tree is very simplified. Um, the other tree has a lot more leaves on it. This has all fruit. There's no real leaves on it, but the other um, the other sampler has um, leaves and the fruit on it. So I actually, and, and I did provide a link to the sampler uh, by Ann Kendall. So you can look at it, the website it's on, and there's a lot of other samplers there if you wanna look through them. It'll be a fun, fun uh, search for you if you love samplers. So I've got this almost charted. I, I've got the whole, um, I have pretty much everything done but the verse in this area here. So all the rest of this is charted. I just have to do a few tweaks on it. And um, I also have, here it is. I'm charting it all in DMC because it's easier. And um, they have a lot of colors that match. There's, and actually this, it looks really faded, but the back is, isn't too much brighter. So um, there's just a few spots where you can see that um, ugh, her verse is stitched. This is um, pink here uh, on the back. Um, it's a little bit lighter, but it, it's really in um, the colors are what they are. Sorry, I have a fuzzy wuzzy or something on my nose. It's driving me crazy. But it has this nice little 223. A lot of you will know that shade of pink, um, the 500 greens. I've got 500 and um, 501 are the two greens I'm using. And then there's this kind of a, it's, kind, it's called cocoa, but it's kind of a, almost a, lavendery brown that's in a couple little places on there and then there's some other greens and things dark oh, that's the 500s a lot of um the these uh, tan and off-white colors that are very similar but different i can still see the difference on there but i wanted to have the floss to make sure i um use the right color for the right area and some other um 433, very typical brown uh, color in 435, these two colors. And then this is um, 
3371, which is that dark black brown color that I see on a lot of uh, samplers. So anyway, that's what I'm working on. Like I said, she's almost done uh, being charted. I just need to sit down and um, figure out um, the rest of this, um, the verse, um, all this uh, section is stitched over one. So it's a little more challenging to chart out. Plus I'm using a new program. So just to make it even more challenging, I'm uh, using a, a new program I haven't used much before. So it's a little, a little more challenging. So anyway, but I'm, I'm loving it. I'm having a good time with it. And I can't wait to get her stitched, at least get her started. <laughs> so stay tuned for more. I'm sure I'll be updating as I, as I move along on that one. So that's it for floss tube number 24. Again, thank you, thank you, thank you. I, it was a good year. I'm happy with my all my uh, floss tubes I've done. So be sure to subscribe so you know when the next video posts. Um, comment, let me know what you like, what, what else you want to see. I have a new stitch of the month in January. We're going to start a new sampler. I'm just going to continue down on mine but you can start a new uh, Stitch of the Month sampler and that'll again be posted in the um, Stitch of the Month Facebook group. Plus I'll be demonstrating the stitch in my next Floss Tube video. Let me know what stitches you wanna learn. I'm here for you. Um, so you can, um, you know, let me know what stitches. And I just did the design with 365 different stitches. So I'm hoping I can find a stitch uh, for next month. And again, all, um, all links are posted below, and I will see you on the 1st of January, 2023. How exciting. Have a wonderful uh, new year.